Here's today's game, 25 minutes and zero increment versus a 22.65 rated opponent. My rating on here is 17.66. So we wanted to practice using the answer. Um, we like to play higher rated players just to um, test the skills. So we opened, well, the opponent opened first with e4. Then we push through blocking, keeping it nice and simple. We did nothing spectacular in this game whatsoever. So I'm really pleased with this game. And developed as usual with the knight, protecting the pawn, also developing the knight itself. Simple capture in the center. And captured back. Had the whole ethos of keeping everything simple, trying to protect our pieces, our key squares. Queen captures, we push the pawn up as usual. And at this moment here, it looked fairly strong for the opponent. What I didn't want to do this time was to develop the knight out. They push the pawn and give them the 20 pointer. They're a higher rated player, so they probably wouldn't um, take too long to demolish me if I allowed the queen to be taken and my king not to get castled on this occasion. So we push through, um, utilising our old method of attacking the queen with the smaller pawn in this position. And really comfortable with this position. <clears throat> I really do like it. I've been practising the other ways of, you know, developing the knight coming through here based from evaluation. But I'm thinking playing a higher rated player, they don't really expect this type of move. So I'm going to bring it out. This is my comfort zone. So they moved the queen back, didn't know where they are going to move the queen, so just had to see. So now I can bring my bishop through, protecting the queen. So if then when I develop my knight, if he decides to push forward, I can freely take the pawn now, because the bishop can take the queen if he took our queen. Smallest of um, details. <coughs> so we develop the knight so we can get castled. And he doesn't go for any further attacks. And at this moment, I thought oh, we may have lost a bit of tempo here uh, because he's pushed this pawn here, supporting this pawn. So we've got them thinking defensive already at the beginning of the game. Gage bar is still showing white as advantageous. I'm believing the losing tempo just from that one move there. And we've gained tempo by being able to protect our queen. And we can also get access to castling as well. So we castle king safety, they develop the knight and we look at developing our bishop onto a nice square here, potentially looking to try and maybe pressure this pawn but we didn't really have an idea as to how, wanted to get the queen up here looking to basically try and support the bishop, yeah because he's only got one piece actually protecting there so had sort of thoughts of bringing the queen here didn't look too devastating from the opponent's point in terms of attacking so it was a a nice plan you know a sketchy plan is better than no plan so they developed their bishop so as we said looking to potentially target this area here looks like i'm targeting the b pawn but the b pawn is protected by this um, queen here so uh, there was no dice on that one we were looking to try and put double pressure onto this pawn here they castle and then didn't want to rush it you know coming to this side here attacking the pawn because it does have elements of pushing on here and my queen isn't going to take the pawn so we're just sitting waiting get our pieces into a good position first rook opposite the queen always is a good good starter for 10. so they push the pawn down so we still go ahead looking to attack the pawn here but at the same time we're x-raying through to his queen his queen does have protection at the moment if his queen decides to go away and uh, you know do something different you know maybe coming back here or taking itself off of the diagonal you know the the angle for the rook then we could take the knight off the board but they chose to um double doubly attack on this file here at this moment in time as i thought well i don't really need to lose too much sleep we have enough protection the bishop and the rook protecting there queen's not going to take the pawn so we decided to start pushing up maybe trying to put a bit of pressure onto this pawn here 
but not at this moment in time because the knight would be able to take and the pawn would be able to take but elevating this pawn up also allowed for the fact that if his knight did move for whatever reason then we do have a support another supporting pawn rather than the center pawn to be able to take back if the queen took so there was a lot of thoughts going on there as it's showing the whip gauge bar showing white is increasingly getting better um, I didn't believe they were getting better I believe that they the focal point on this area here with two high high rating players um, pieces seem to be a little bit of a waste of their you know their pieces basically so again this rook move here it sort of signified that yes the queen is going to be moving somewhere and he wasn't looking at moving the knight anytime soon so we move the queen back so basically looking to support the pawn here but at the same token just maybe bringing it in a little bit getting this pawn up here and putting pressure onto this pawn here small thoughts so we brought the queen in and again dancing with the rook and at this moment in time i'm thinking yes we definitely have more tempo up than the opponent now and i didn't look at their grade once i saw their grade i thought you know their rating i thought oh this will be an exciting game to practice the uh, the answer on and as we're playing through the game i'm thinking there's nothing really um outstanding here that i need to be worried about um just keep focused on what i'm trying to do what i'm trying to target on and this rook move here didn't seem to have much weight to it so we brought our rook in line getting ready for any sort of attacks coming across this uh, file here so i thought well he's basically going for a simple doubling up brought the knight around because we we're interested in this square here attacking this pawn at some point you know trying to open up the space a little bit so we developed the knight attacking the bishop knights hunt the bishops in our mantra keeping it all simple and they move the bishop i expected them to move it i'm like thinking a high rated player they're going to do all this dancing with the pieces they, they like to keep that tension type stuff so i was ready for a long game i was ready for all of the um no you're not taking my piece i want to keep the tension type thing so um i prepared my mind for it and as i was developing through i was basically saying to myself the more they dance the weaker they're making their pieces and this knight move here um, did show a little bit of a dip from their advantage because at this moment in time it's showing that they're highly advanced on, on the board i didn't see it I, fe I felt no fear from this position on the board and then the knight move came down i had no worries for the knight move because it wasn't supported by anything and it really wasn't targeting anything major at all only thing i could think was he's trying to put pressure on this pawn here we have a bishop we have a queen we have a rook protecting that pawn so we continued with our attack upon this pawn here which we had sights of initially so they captured and we captured back if he captured with his bishop we'd be able to take his bishop with the queen and that would have been a nice position for us this position here with the bishop i felt was even better for us it felt really quite quite clean so we took the bishop off the board keeping it simple because this was the moment where it was trade or keep the tension for the opponent and i was waiting to see what they wanted to do and they did keep the tension but we didn't want to keep the tension we want to blast through we want to create havoc on the board so again now we're attacking a piece it doesn't want it taken as we expected so we bring our bishop back now looking again to trade rooks off the board get the pieces off the board again as we mentioned they're not interested in taking pieces off the board we are higher rated players don't like their pieces being taken off the board they want to look really fancy and dancy and and be able to sort of like you know crush you like a ball constructor you know slowly but surely just ring you out so we develop the knight um potentially the bishop can take we'll lose a pawn here but i believe my position on the board is going to be better for me so he does capture captures so you can feel the celebration going on in, in their heads yes they're a pawn up i think here so we go for the queen with a check on the king he does actually capture we capture the pawn put a bit of pressure on does the knight blocker 
that had no worries there we brought the bishop through protecting quite nicely so at this stage here now I'm just thinking well in my head even though they're plus one I believe yeah um, they, this could easily go into a drawn position if, if played correctly because we have a, a dark square bishop he's got his pieces on white squares so my dark square bishop's gonna have mobility get my king into the action brings the rook down now so immediately I'm saying oh he wants to um, get his pawn in the center of the board but he actually captures and I fought for the life of me wow that, that might have given us a drawn position gauge bar showing that there's nowhere near a drawn position um, it's, pro it's probably because of that plus two or three he's got now because he's got like one two three four five six he's got six pawns I've got one two three four five oh, it's plus one at this moment okay so start bringing the king up being mindful of the knight forks and they're pushing the pawns down at this moment in time I was feeling fairly comfortable with the position we've practiced these types of endings the pawn endings um, and we've been working well with the bishops now to get a better understanding of what the bishops can do what are the power bases for them um, I am a knight man still a knight man but I'm getting to the level whereby the bishops I can work with the bishops probably the same level as the knights now so I'm feeling more confident with them so we pushed up the pawn here and I don't know if it's right or wrong but we pushed the pawn up basically blocking off the activity of the pawns here so at least we could take one off yep yeah. um, I probably thought he was going to push this pawn here to sway this pawn from going going to here and he's got two linked pawns coming down that might have been a worry but they brought the king down at this moment I'm thinking well there's not much that I can do I can't move my king away from this position because he wants to get his king down here and start taking our pawns off so I have to keep my king static here couldn't really move the bishop because if I move the bishop back he's got scope to dance around with his king a little bit maybe after four maybe I could have left the pawn there but I really wanted my bishop to have play in the game also key thing I wanted to do was bring this pawn up here to attack this pawn because potentially the idea that I had was pushing this pawn onto here he takes so it's, this pawn is no longer um, supporting this knight then the king take <coughs> king takes here then we take the knight it didn't work out like that king took and then we pushed the pawn up realizing oh the tempo was slightly wrong because his knight can dance around but I didn't have a panic if you have a look at the gauge bar it's showing that basically um, white is out and out winning here so even when I got to this position here I said to myself it's still a drawn position yes he's got his pawns up but it's still a drawn position or we could potentially get a win if the opponent doesn't play it correctly so they captured the pawns so I think they're three pawns up now one two three four five six and we've got three pawns but we have a deadly bishop and we've got a very excited king so we bring the excited king up into the action to put a bit of threat around the um, whites area so it's only showing white as winning at this moment because they've got three bought three extra pawns so in, in essence they should win but I really didn't have a panic nice and steady movement just pushing the pawn supporting the pawn waiting for the opponent to move now the ball's in their court now at this moment in time they're 22 22 65 so i'm waiting for the golden move that really just knocks me out of the water bring the bishop up looking to get into the action saying well look we can still take pieces off the board here and it puts a check on us bring the king back down his knight is nicely positioned now in the center of the board you know blocking off these key squares so it's, it's looking really quite excited in that position but it does need the support from its king so we bring the bishop back and the king's looking to get excited and looking to support these pawns coming down majorly they were looking at potentially getting this pawn to come here to push onto here so that when we take here either they push past or they take so then they've got like an extra pawn in the center here but if we play it correctly and we keep our king active and lively we should be able to hold a draw still this is what I was saying gauge, mark, gauge bar is so it's saying showing 
No, you're absolutely losing. So bring the king across, and we just move the bishop again. And the knight is looking potentially. I'm thinking, how is he going to get this pawn? He's, it looks like he's angling to get this pawn somehow. So we bring the bishop back again, showing that we're in the game, just to put a check on the king. And we bring the bishop back again, attacking the knight, showing we're still in the game here. Um, show me what you've got. So they attack the bishop. Obviously, we're not releasing the bishop. And as we said, looking to push this pawn down onto this pawn here to get some pawn advantage on this side. Still wasn't too worried. Started using the active king now on the other side of the board, giving the opponent something to think about. And they actually follow suit. They probably would have been better continuing their attack. But hey, they're 2265, they're way above me. You know, they're, that's like, a, is that like master level, international, international master level or something like that? So, and it's not even got a question mark on either, so they're fully fledged 2265. So we brought the king across looking to attack the pawn that's got no, no protection on. And as we said, they pushed down. So they push, push, and we capture. So they've got one pawn that is um, unsupported at the minute, but it is on a white square. So I'm thinking they're going to bring the king across, paw, and just ramp this home so they'll have a knight extra and we, would, we won't have a bishop. So we'd be trying to scrabble to get these pawns up as best possible. But they brought the knight across. I mean, it's still showing them as a great advantage because they've got two extra pawns. And the knight is looking lively. But I sat there and I thought, well, that doesn't look like the best move to make. The gauge bar didn't move too much at all, really, did it? So we captured the pawn, looking to reduce down. And then the knight is attacking this pawn here. Okay, so then I realised, oh, well, he's taking his knight all the way over there. He's losing a lot of tempo. I think this is going to be a draw, as far as I can see. So we start bringing our king into the game. We didn't want to leave it here. We wanted to get it as far across on the other side of the board as possible, if we could to help the bishop because the idea was potentially i think if the opponent had done it right the king would have been supporting this pawn coming down here to, just to get rid of the bishop because i would have had to take the pawn at some stage and then the king could take and then he would have a lovely knight doing his knight defenses so that's probably the best way for them to actually have done that so they brought the king down we brought our king across waiting to take this pawn here so we take the knight off the board so at this stage here definitely and the gauge bar showing it's a draw so that to me i was a bit shocked at that particular move i don't know if they didn't know how to do an ending 2265 i'm <laughs> i'm still bemused now this is why i've actually recorded this game because it shows that even the higher rated players potentially don't really know how to end a game and especially with an advantage that the opponent had so they push the pawn down now the bishop can now freely just go and actually take that pawn at some stage we defend here and as soon as that pawn drops it's basically a draw now because he captures here captures there and just bring the bishop through only move well he could move his king but at some stage the pawn will get taken and it's a draw so Playing higher rated players does not mean that you're playing God. You're not playing somebody that is untouchable or, you know, irreproachable or whatever the word is. It's a matter of practicing your games, feeling confident with your position. And even if your piece is down, like in this particular game here, if I was in a worse position, I would have resigned. But we've seen these types of positions before and it's up to the opponent to prove the win. As you could see, the gauge bar was showing why it was winning just because they had mater extra material. But we've always said you can have as much material on the board as you want, but if you haven't got the right position, you may as well have no pieces on the board and just your king. Okay, another 45-15 game. It's 13-44. So early defence with the Queen. We want to get castled. 
just develop the bishop. So what stage are we at with each of the moves that we're making? So do 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 do. It's like a slow slow attack thing going on, but there's nothing major, so we can see if we can open up this centre a bit. with the queen, knight comes, I have to bring the queen back maybe, or I'll bring it across you still have to be wary when they do slow opening type things because they wait for you to overextend and then blast through any weak areas but developing slow when I'm in end game opening mode really does capitulate their position already on the board I'm just taking not into fancy stuff so we could go on castle let's king safety it is 45 minutes 15 seconds so I don't need to move so quick but it seems pretty straightforward for me those types of moves king safety we've got that position opponent now they've got freedom to choose which way they want to go in castle but at the same token they're not developed the pieces so the knights come through it's attacking our pawn that's unprotected could develop our knight just to protect and develop because obviously we have sites of attacking a higher piece so he's looking for the he's not going castling just yet he's uh, blocking stuff he's doing um, hmm interesting so he's blocked off the knight movement coming here. Hmm, well, that's interesting. It's going to bring the bishop out. If this Hmm. Okay, so he's brought his knight out on the rim, but it's only temporary. He, he has a plan either here or coming back in. It's not. It could go there because he's got protection from his queen. So let's just take this baby off the board because it looks like it's going to cause us some disruption. Simple direct moves. It's quite hard to think of simple direct moves when you're advancing up in your own development because you're always thinking, what's the tactical thing here? I could keep the tension and build some sort of lovely, fancy tactical movement. To me, really try and cut those down to a bare minimum. Focus on the one to fours, even when you're getting higher up. The one to four calculation really is quite unique in its own right because the opponent doesn't have to do what you're calculating so why waste your time doing further calculations only if they're forced moves like we keep saying on the king because the king they have to do something if you're putting a check on the king they have to react to that the others they don't even the queen they don't have to because they could be sacrificing for a better position Okay, so could bring the knight across to come here, but because the bishop's there, it might be a bit nugatory. Yeah, don't think I like that bishop having that control. Yeah, did it get the queen off the back, attacking this pawn? I think bringing the queen off the back allowing the rooks to maybe get some sort of play on this open file
Okay, so they've got into a big thing. Issue is they haven't got castled yet and they don't seem to have space, so they might have to push this pawn. And he's making space by moving the knight, attacking the bishop. Just drinking the coffee. So if we leave that there, queen could take, but it's then not on the right angle. He wants to make space. Can't go there, can't go there. Do I like my bishop? I'm beginning to like bishops. I don't really have a problem with them now, like I've mentioned before, I've practiced with both. And I think that they're quite okay. Let's go here. I think I've got them to an equal understanding now, the knights and the bishops, so I'm fairly comfortable with them now. I even like the rooks now, because before <laughs> I, I said the rooks are so flat, you know, they the rat never use nor ornament but now I understand more the benefits of the rooks I understand their weaknesses understand the bishops weaknesses and also the knights weaknesses so because I understand their weaknesses I, I, I attempt to make them strong Small piece attacking a higher piece if he leaves it there, but he looks like he's wanting to make space for his castling. So like I say, this needs to be coming here, bishop needs to be there, and then his castling takes place. So it's like I think he's a few tempi behind again, as usual. Which is which is okay. But I'm I'm thinking I needed access to this area here. One of the concerns is that he does have bishops as well and he's like controlling these squares, you know, with the bishop. Let's move this queen. These moves, def definitely, genuinely, these moves definitely are not giving his king protection. This king is out in the open, he's not really getting, he's made, sp oh, he's made space for all his bishops so his bishop can come out. And then he's going to go and castle. So a smaller piece attacking a higher piece like we said. Where does the knight actually go? Because he can't go there, it's blocked. His queen now has blocked his passageway here. He can't go there because he's pawn. He can go here if he wants or he can go there. Or basically he just brings his pawn down to defend. And if we take, then his pawn takes. And then he does have this file here. So that might be his strategy, because then his queen just comes across, but obviously our dark square bishop's there, so comes here, but then the knight is there, so he's going to have to do some jostling to either drop here, to then drop there, so that his queen then can come down and put a check on the king in this square. Okay, so that's the sort of pattern he's probably going to follow. So we're probably best off, because we've been in this situation before, probably best off not taking until we saw our, um, saw our pudding out first. This pawn doesn't have any protection on. So if that does come down, I don't think I want to be greedy. Probably bring the queen up. Attacking the pawn, bishop probably comes and defends, which way? this way maybe hmm yeah it's definitely one of those we don't want to fall into just yet we're not, we're not ready for it <laughs> Could always bring the knight back though, attacking the knight again. That might be an idea. Bishop attacking the pawn. Bishop defends. His 
King is so airy, I'd really want to be pressuring that king. Hmm. Yeah, okay, something like that. I've got options. Which one's my key one? Probably this one because it's putting pressure. Yep, I've gone nice and deep in the tank there. So how many have we done there? Not taking, so forget that. That's one, potentially, after they've gone there. It doesn't have to take, so then what would we do? It probably is forced to take though, really. If he goes there, we go here. Because then the pawn is still sta still static. And that is no longer um, whoa it's taken a pawn but I don't think that's um let's take here I don't want it don't need to overthink that one okay so it looks like they've given us the game there we see it's not over till it's over ship here we can look to trade down now get the rooks across then he castles I'm trying to avoid him castling but he's gonna get to castle isn't he open file if his bishop goes there we could challenge the bishop as well okay so if he comes there look to challenge the bishop open up this file he castles challenge the bishop bishop takes queen takes we're on his rook also on the pawn that looks okay that looks fairly favorable small potatoes nothing major can go there can go there not really seeing my well maybe it's protecting this pawn because it wants the queen to move one two the bishop thing is the only sensible move, I think, because he definitely needs to go and castle. But maybe they can play like this with their king out in the open. Always got to remember that as well. Some people can play like this. It's a struggle, but they can play like it if they protect the king with their pieces. But then you're not actually being in a fence mode, so you're not really establishing an attack of your own so then you're losing loads of tempi trying to just defend your king so they're putting a lot of thought into this so i'll tell you what i'll pause for a second okay as soon as i pause they make a move okay so he's gone for the bishop move here so he's protecting the pawn it's one it's a move i'm not too sure He's put himself on the open file thing here, you see, so I don't understand why that move would be made. So we said we were going to challenge the bishop if it came out, and it has done so. We'll follow the process of just challenging. Well, the threat of being able to challenge. So they'll castle, and then we can challenge. Or there might be something else. Could take this pawn here because it's only got the rook on so we actually get a piece off the board but again like we said this bishop here is just stuck in the middle ah uh, he's blocking off stuff but the thing is he's only got the bishop protecting that so we can take that pawn off the board can't we 
should have gone and castled, I think. We've got options of taking this pawn here. Bishop takes, then the queen takes. Knight can put a check on their queen. But if I put the check on the queen, it'd probably come and support. Is that really what we want to do? don't really want to give them the option of coming back and protecting the bishop when we could actually grab this pawn for a better position as far as I can see it doesn't have to take those so so the rhythm, rhythm of this position seems to be looking more in our favour every move the opponent's making all because genuinely they haven't gone and castled the king isn't safe so it f I feel the snowball is just getting bigger for us. Doesn't have to take, it could come back and play here. But we take, I suppose, get the rooks involved on this file. It's looking a lot better for us. So it should take, I believe, queens here. What's the benefit for them? The Queen's here still stopping him from castling, so if he goes for that, then obviously we take his Queen off the board, then his King is no longer castling. So I'll press the pause button, and then they'll obviously make a move straight away, so... So they've actually gone and castled. have options is there something wrong with us taking take the bishop his queen takes don't want to lose out on queen takes get the rook across here attacking their queen yeah I don't see a problem with that a simple capture here get the rook involved on in the file as we mentioned, so it all seems pretty straightforward. So it's going to give us a bit more, a bit of a power base on this file. Potentially get them doubled up. Does have a white square bishop? Mm, no, no, there's no worries. I don't think. So it's there. Don't know where it moves from there, could move back again to where he came from. This knight is chomping at the bit to actually put a check on the queen if he does go back there. And he does go, so we'll just bring the rook nice and steadily. Nothing special, nothing great, we're explaining exactly what we're doing, keeping it nice and simple. As always subconsciously what I've done is I have targeted the area and um, that I'm focusing on but I'm just steadily away just driving through any advantage that I can gain nice and steadily not rushing anything so if we were looking to double potentially bring this rook here and then that rook there all simple potatoes if he does want to go back, like we said, the knight wants to chomp at the bit to put a bit of pressure on here. Looking to put some pressure there, maybe. Some pressure here. Queen obviously wants to get into the game as well, so... Could be looking to face off the king this way, or coming around the backside on this way here. So many options. There's so many options. It all depends on what the opponent does. So we want to try and keep the advantage that we've gained, that the opponent's given to us. And it's not moved exactly back there, but he's gone opposite the king because he's looking for this movement here. Queen is protecting this pawn. 
So this pawn now is not defended by the queen. This is why we, I expected them to go here because it's still defended. So we can bring this knight attacking the queen. You can probably picture him coming here to attack the knight. Being opposite the queen is a strong thing, a king, sorry, is a strong position to have. We did have sides of this, but it's not, uh, not going to do anything grand. So it's come down attacking the knight. So we do have the option of coming here because we're defending the knight, but then our queen has not got a defense on it. So we'll potentially have to move the knight. We could move it here to attack his rook. Could move it there to put like a 2 on one on the pawn here. There's options. If we go there attacking the rook, the rook then comes through. Let's go here and put a 2 on one on this pawn. Yes, I'm still conscious that the uh, thing is he's going to come for this movement here. So if we did take this pawn and his rook took, then our queen took, then his bishop can do this particular move. So we wouldn't be able to take it back. But we'd have to push a rook up to defend. So that's not too much because we will be up the exchange plus a piece. the queen moves then we do have the knight movement here we do have another knight that is looking to get into the action as well but we do also have rooks that want to get into the action as well all depends on what the opponent does I'm trying to keep the advantage but I don't want the advantage to make me dance away from my king too much because we are protecting our king area He's got two pieces that are away from protecting his king. He's gone for it. He's gone for it. And our queen is protecting this area, so our rook could come here and attack his queen. And then we can get the bishop. of course he blocks it <laughs> uh, night 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 could go with a check his queen takes pawn takes then his queen comes down checks no that's too ugly let's keep it simple we knew this was coming anyway. So protect your area. Just because your castle doesn't mean you're protected. Your pieces protect your king, not the castle. As you can see, the castle itself is slowly being dissipated, but we've turned it in, in, into an advantageous position here. We're okay covered on this side at the minute. And we've got protection here. So that's what protecting your king means. It's also having the space to be able to come and protect your king. Like the rook. It's got the space to come and protect the king from attacks from key pieces. Whoa, coming out with the best stuff. Simple capture, I think. Rook takes, rook takes. There's a massive. <clears throat> there's a massive um, 
onslaught that can happen here. Could still go with the knight move, putting the check on, but it's uh, it's not a definitive thing because we can take his bishop off the ball, but it leaves us open. His queen can come, but then our queen can come across, I suppose. I don't think they'll do that though. Knight with a check, get the bishop off. We don't have to capture, but could just move it out of the way. If he moves it out of the way, we can come and support with the rook. Keeping that pressure on to the queen. It's thinking long and hard, so obviously he's not going to actually take, is he? Yeah, so he's not taken. just bring the rook here protecting <clears throat> keeping that pressure and we are condensing down the area around their king which is the idea of the answer don't really want to do a slow move like moving the king across but if it's to my benefit and I can get the bishop off the board that's no problem Maybe get this um, rook out of the way somehow. Still potential for capturing the pawn. He may take because his rook is on our queen. Like we said. So he's on our queen. We're going to take his queen. I'm not going to deliberate about that. We've got material on the board. Plus... <clears throat> with a nice position on the board as well. So he's got options, take the queen, we take back, moves his bishop out of the way, or he takes our rook and we take his bishop. So we're gonna be material up and working our pieces together towards his king Gary, or reducing down the amount of pieces that he's got so that he capitulates. Let's see, he's gone for it. Okay, nice and steady away. Does he move the bishop or does he take the rook? I think he's probably going to take the rook, but eh, he's only going to have one piece left. So he's probably going to fight better with at least two pieces, so he may as well save the bishop. Move the rook behind here, I suppose, protecting the rook as the knight as well. Two pieces better than one. What's he thinking? Yep, two pieces better than one. So let's go here with the rook. I didn't know he was bringing that there, but we were attacking this pawn, defending our knight. But now we're attacking the bishop, so he's having to move it again. So that helps us. So this is one of those where you think capitulation may come into effect, but it's still continuing on because they're saying prove it prove that you have the win so if we bring our rook here because our knight is protecting these squares this must be something we can do or shall we just take this pawn first before anything happens his rook can squeeze through there and it's going to be putting checks on our king take the pawn I'm going to take the pawn because then it allows us potentially to come across here and put a check on the king and then the king can't move well 
it's got this square here which we need to contend with so it's usually worse when you've got more pieces on the board and you're trying to get them all working together and it is best trying to get them working together if you especially it's like rooks and knights so he's going to take a pawn here just to feel he's in the game still could do the bishops here yeah, bishops basky <laughs> fisher spasky thing push up if he does then i suppose he drops here Rook's protecting this pawn. Knight could drop back and attack the bishop and win the bishop. Yeah, so he's coming for checks on the king type situation. Could continue with this movement. Here he comes down, puts a check on the king, move the king across. So then the rook is here, so then he peels off a pawn maybe or something. Knight comes here, this pawn can't take the king, uh, can't take the knight because the rook is there. So the only place he's got is here. And then the rook would go, whoa, ho, 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 steady on. Can't go there. Good job we did that. Bishop will just take it. Oh, so we might as well push onto the bishop here to see what it wants to do. Then he'll come down with his check on our king. Let's do that. Whoa! Good job we did that then. Crikey. So move the king once he comes down for his check. Because they want to feel like they're in the game, like they're still putting some pressure on. So these attacks here, just to try and get a disruption maybe of our position but it's helping us in a sense bishop can go there rook could take the bishop if we chose to do so but i think we're fairly okay with that so oh it does actually move it so we could go here like we said if he's going to keep the rook on the back we might not be successful with what we're trying to do but let's go for it anyway if he does choose to come down but then he goes back up again because he's not really going to go here because the knight will take it so we'll have a momentary check on the king king is safe here because his rook is there or is it because this knight can come here Ah, he's um, seeing stuff. Right, okay, so this is where we get into action stations because we can go here with a check. So it's the knight that's putting the check on the king. King still has to go to this corner here and this poor bishop has blocked the rook defending. So then we'd get the checkmate. I think we try it that way. He can't come here, can't go there. He has to go there and then that's checkmate. Brilliant. all from positions the opponent actually gave to us and it was nice doing the calculation with this game here um yeah i've really enjoyed this one it'd be funny if it didn't work out the way that i'm thinking but we've got a check on he can't take and we covered this position early doors it's nice that we've got it and it's, it's absolutely but damn yes excellent brilliant game so like we keep saying you've got to castle but when even when you castle you've got to protect your king so let's just have a quick shifty at this right we'll just do it from here so the idea about castling um, to those who are just starting out in chess and even to the experienced players who play chess the idea of castling it isn't just that it's not making your king safe it's your pieces around your king that make your king safe so the opponent eventually got to castle but the use of their pieces he's got the queen around there but 
they're not helping and they're attacking when really they haven't got enough protection around their king area to actually do so so the sort of quick and dirty tactic pattern nice pattern but because we've got pieces protecting our area we can then start taking advantage of the weakness around their area because they don't have pieces protecting because the queen could have taken the knight but their position would have been bad on the board yet again so we supported and as you can see now the king really doesn't have any pieces it's home alone it's got a queen here but it's been under it's under attack is the queen so the king is home alone it's a crucial so then we capture and what pieces does the king have around it now it doesn't have any pieces around it and the bishops going further and further away from the king and we're trying to make inroads towards the king stage at a time a bit at a time depending on what the opponent's doing so that is the massive difference within the answer process understanding the genuine weaknesses um, around the things that people normally purport as being strong things like fianchetto in your bishops it's not a strong move it's a long-term move it's a i want to take the, this game the length that i can take it it's not a, um, it's not a powerful move it's not a strong in your face move it's a sit and wait you come and get me type move and if you're playing somebody who's playing the end game opening correctly um you'll lose tempo and you won't have the advantage and your king will be overexposed like in this game here lovely ending but the principle is castling does not make you safe it's the pieces that make you safe as well as all the other concepts the simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically and the end game opening you put those concepts and all the underlying concepts together then you're going to have a complete system for yourself to actually operate and develop in in your own chess games 